Beloved in Christ, welcome to the Healing Streams Reflection. The title for today's post is The Three Wells of Prayer Ask, Seek, and Knock. In Matthew chapter 7, verse 7 to 8, the Bible declares, Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receives, and he who seeks, finds, and to him who knocks, it will be opened. These are the three wells of prayer. Let's consider the first world of prayer. That is the known world. First, the world that deals with the known, the things we know that is what the Lord meant by ask. Ask meaning that you pray in the known world. You pray concerning things you know about, you are aware of. The second world of prayer is the unknown world. Seek. Seek deals with the unknown world. The world that is beyond your mind. In other words, The world that you are not acquainted with. You are seeking it. It's unknown to you. You are seeking to enter into a whole different realm of prayer. Then the third world of prayer. The knocking world. I believe this type of world is completely heavenly and divine. Knocking deals with the spiritual realm. And with this knocking world, it's likened to three phases of levels of courts. The first court, that is the action world. Here in this world, you come to God in prayer. And you begin to be conscious of what you are going to see because of the troubles that you care about. In a sense, there is a request you are aware of, things that are burdening your heart. For instance, Lord, will you please take care of my son, my finances? So this asking world is the natural world. And it begins with the flesh. In other words, you begin this prayer. Season. Prayer time. Knowing in what you are going to say. Going through your prayer list. And most of it, we at times even... Write down the prayer list and then we pray through. But there comes a time the prayer list is complete. Sometimes you'll feel like repeating the same thing or too often till you feel God is not listening. At times driven, you are driven by the pressure that is on you. Maybe God didn't hear me, so I have to do it over and over again. In this world, it is a place where war exist things attack your mind and sometimes you pray and you are tired you yawn and you fall asleep and you get angry and you want to go for a sandwich and you think maybe you feel better and want to come back and pray again so it's a struggle it's like a merry-go-round but now 
you enter the second realm where there is breakthrough, where you actually feel something broke in your heart. There is a prompting. And suddenly, you are no longer repeating something you know about mentally. But now, the heart begins to cry for God's presence. So, there is a searching for the Lord. So, when Jesus said, seek, he was asking you and I to keep pursuing God. He wants you to be a God chaser. Now, David said, I long for God in a testy land. I am seeking you, O oh Lord. I seek water in the desert. So, David, in a sense, related his seeking expedition. Now, remember, David, the background of David was a shepherd boy. And so he was in the desert. So he understands how at times you have to seek water for the sheep. Because he has to tread upon unknown places before to see whether he get he will get water or he will get a stream. Especially during desert, I mean during dry, I mean I mean dry places during famine times. And that is the seeking world. Then the second court. That is the court of God. We enter into the court of God. And so the second court is seeking world. Now, this is the next step of prayer. In fact, you cannot enter through that or into that world until you have completed the first world. Now, nobody can just jump right into the seeking world you have to go through the asking world first because you have to be released of your burden and then emptied yourself you see what has burdened you what you have been burdened with but there comes that breakthrough and if you stay long enough on your knees or in your prayer closet There will come a time or that moment you will feel that breakthrough. You will feel that release in your heart. Now the moment you feel that release, suddenly the Holy Spirit takes over. And now you are no longer praying about things you know about. But you start praying about things you are not aware of till that thing happens. The Holy Spirit begins to impart to you what you ought to pray about. That is called seeking well. And at this time, Romans chapter 8 comes into play that we do not know what, what we we do not know what we ought to pray. It is the Holy Spirit that intercedes for us. So in this paradigm or parameter, or in this seeking world paradigm, the Holy Spirit brings that strong conviction and then begin to lead you and you begin to pray about that. And this is where God takes over. And now your words become specific, powerful, worthy. Your mind no longer wanders or is tired. Now you become sharp, focused, and strong. Now everything is just right. That is the seeking world. But when you stay long enough in the seeking world, it erupts in praise. Now thanking him, praising him, adoring him, that answered prayer. is come and that he has heard you is an abundant world the seeking world is an abundant world the seeking world is a blessed world the seeking world is a world that lacks the struggles but is full of god's victory 
Now, you come to a place where praise leads you into incredible intimacy with God. Intimacy with God, where words become inadequate, is called the knocking word. So, the intimacy, it means into me, see. God begin to open your eyes to see through God. Because at this time, you are so lifted, high in the realm of the spirit. Paul even said that, John, John even said in Revelation chapter 1, he says, I was in the spirit in the Lord's day. Paul even went to third heavens. And so the third, third court, which is the court of God still, is the knocking world. Now, the knocking world deals with the spirit. The mystery in the realms of the spirit. You see, it is not screaming. In fact, it is a time where God is so real to you. It's deep calling into deep. The Bible says, deep calling into deep. I mean, you touch him in that world and he touches you. Now, there is a divine communion that erupts in your heart. In fact, the knocking world is so powerful, it does not require audible words. It is deeper than words. It's deeper than your soul within. It's deep. It's deeper than anything you can produce in the flesh. It's absolute glory. You, you begin to experience that shekinah. Now tears become your language. And the flow of the spirit in your heart. The flow of your spirit man or spirit woman in your heart becomes the language of God. And you begin to realize that God is so listening. You are so near to God. Now, it's deep calling unto deep. Begin to reflect. Why revelations, the gifts and the talent and the special abilities that God has endowed with you begin to explode spirit to spirit. Communion erupts with the Holy Ghost. That is what Jesus meant when he said in John, I in them and they in me, that they may be made perfect in one. So you and the Father are one now. You see, there comes a unity that is absolutely divine. You cannot separate the Lord from the person at that point. There can be no separation now. You see, over here, in this knocking court, you see, you begin to realize that there is an opening. There is an opening. Now, in retrospect, over in action world, demons can attack you. Demons easily attack you in the asking world. Because that is the world of the flesh. That is the outer court. But in this knocking world, a semblance of the tabernacle of Moses, which is absolute perfect description of this world of prayer, you begin to see that communion with the Spirit connecting to heaven. Because you see, the Lord Jesus Christ, who is on the right hand side of God, he knows the mind of the Holy Spirit in you. And so there is that interaction. Think about the tabernacle of Moses. It was surrounded by a fence. And within that fence was a tent. So the tent has two departments. Right there was a gate made up of four colors, symbolic of Christ and his four offices and the four gospels represent these four colors so you come into a place where there is an altar of sacrifice which represents the blood of christ of the work of the cross then you pass and then you come to what is called the lava which is like a big cup and a saucer made up of brass and filled with water and the priest wash 
their hands and feet before they went into the holy place to serve God. Now, as you come to the holy place, the first department of this tent, you have to come through what is called the door. The door was held up by five pillars and which are symbolic of five offices of the church. As you come in, there's a lampstand right there. And there was a table of bread called the show bread right here with the 12 loaves, symbolic of the 12 tribes of Israel. Here, there's a table of incense. Beyond the table of incense stood the veil, a thick curtain right here. And the priest, once a year, only went through that veil when the Ark of the Covenant stood. The Ark of the Covenant, the cover of it, looked like a crown with two angels. The cherub here and there on each side, the wings touch each side, covering what we call the mercy seat right here, which is actually the cover itself, surrounded by what looks like a crown. Brothers and sisters, I want to tell you that when we are talking about the knocking prayer, you, you got into a place where you are entering into that holy of holies arena of God. And that is where you begin to meet the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, seated on His Majesty. And that is where worship begins to burst open in you. And as you begin to see your spirit and the soul, your soul began sobbing. Because here you are in the presence of the throne room of God, lifting His name, adoring Him, magnifying Him. Now you won't be praying for what you want from God. But now your prayers will be turned into adoration of who God is. He is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. The Alpha and Omega. The author and finisher of your faith. Yes. He's the one who came all the way from heaven died to save you so that you and I who are sons of God will become sons of men will become sons of God and he who was a son of God became a son of man so that you and I who were sons of man will now become sons of God and we have become that is what it means that prayer is a communication between you and God. God bless you. Bye-bye.